In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, on Friday, the eighth day of April, in the year of our Lord and Saviour, 2022. We continue with our week, the, the week of um, mentorship for our teens. I uh, think from, yeah, the, largely those who are preparing to go to Form 1. We have talked about how to communicate to your children. We talked about the benefit of having that warmth, the warmth in relationship. Today, and maybe tomorrow, I want to look at what would be the barriers. Why is it becoming increasingly difficult for our parents to have a productive communication? Remember, there is difference between just communicating with your children and what we call productive communication. Productive communication is where we have the hair of the banter that uh, children can raise issues and parents can address them without the feeling of insecurity or any fear. That would happen. That a child will write to their fathers and the fathers will respond. They will call, the fathers will pick. I have had situations where a young fellow asks you, uh, if you tell them, but you can call your dad. And then she will tell you, even if I call my dad, he cannot pick my call. Even if I text my dad, he cannot respond to my text message. Of course, that tells you, it doesn't tell you that the dad is very busy. It tells you that uh, the dad has, over the years, communicated to the child that... Uh, they are not his priority. It is that simple. And the son has just said, it is true, I know I can't, I can't get my dad, and even if he gets my call, he, can't, he cannot be able to answer. Whatever reason. So what would be the barriers that would make it impossible or that would make it so hard for parents to have a productive communication? One of them is family breakup. If you like marital breakup, I have, over the years I have been in marriage therapy, I have found it a bit weird, if not quite unethical, where parents use children to communicate to one another, or the child is subjected to very unfair and inhumane treatment because of their mother who is not relating very well with their dad. Sometimes, it becomes difficult for you to communicate to your daughter because you and your wife separated. And the fact that your daughter chose to remain with the mother, it becomes difficult for you to relate with her. Remember, those of you who have gone through professional therapy, when there comes time to separate, because separation is healthy, there must be, please address the word must, there must be a session where the two sit down and come up with what they call rules of engagement. Part of that paper, one pointer or one point of that uh, paper is children, if they are of age, they are at liberty to choose where they want to go. If they are above 18 in the Kenyan law, I don't know what happens in other countries, but in this case, uh, if the, in, in our country, if the child is above 18, you give them a chance where they want to, to go. There are those who choose to be with their mom, others with their dad. Respect their decision. Remember, before we get to that, you have had sessions with them explaining to them why you are not living together or why you are not going to live together for the next whatever time that you have decided. Now, when people just part away just like that, 
and the child, in their own wisdom, decides to go with the father. The mother may find it difficult to relate with the daughter. Why? Because the daughter followed her enemy. Remember, gracious ladies, your husband may be an enemy to you for whatever happened, but your husband cannot be an enemy to his own daughter. So do not push your problems or your issues to your daughter or your son. If your son decides to be left with the mother, don't punish him. You can't pay his school fees, you can't do this or you can't do the other one. Your son decided to be left with the mother. He has his own reasons. Maybe he has realized that you are a man who cannot take care of a child. Maybe he has realized that you've got other priorities and he is not one of them. And then, in your own wickedness, you decide not to pay their school fees, you decide not to pick their calls, you decide sometimes, sometimes, so unfortunate, you decide even to embarrass them in public or to make sure that you even embarrass their mother in public because of whatever happened. That is not right. When families break up, when marriages break up, it becomes Im impossible for parents to have a productive and a healthy communication with their children. The barrier number two, we call them uh, faith cum religious barriers. Now, this is huge. I have known of families with multiple belief systems. And I would remember a certain family that, of five, mom, dad, and their three kids. And none of them shares the faith with the other one. So you can imagine how difficult that one is. Higher. The mother is a Lutheran, for example. The dad is a Mukurino. One of the sons is CK. The other son, Pentecostal. The other son, redeemed, or whichever. Now, religion affects our world. How we look at life is different, is affected by religion. So, when we do not um, share the same faith, sometimes we will never come to a common ground where we can discuss something because we are religiously suspicious of each other. Maybe dad wants all of us to follow it to his church. Maybe our mom wants all of us to follow her in her church. Maybe mention them. And when, and it has happened, when the mother is not attending the same church with the kids, sometimes, depending on where she goes to church and the quality of their theology, she may think that the kids are just imps. They are small devils. They are not religiously and spiritually encountered. And therefore, you just dismiss them. That dismissive attitude will never allow you to have a healthy communication with your son or with your daughter. It is as simple as that. But it's so sad because many a time we trivialize the issue of religion. And I have said in the past, religion is a silent killer of our marriages. So today now you have known that the same religion is a silent killer of communication between parents and their children. It is serious because before it killed the communication between parents and their kids, then you can imagine that the relationship and the communication between the owners of the marriage, husband and wife, died a long time ago. Maybe they can't relate because they are suspicious of each other. And it becomes so difficult for them to relate. Good people, there are things that we can ignore and we move on in life, but we cannot ignore the religion. The third one that we cannot ignore is what we will pick up tomorrow. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.